on you upstairs. There has been quite a battle here. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. Good evening. We repel the intruders for now. My good friends, if I may have your attention, behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansher was no match for him. Here, here, here. Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I have been eager to make your acquaintance. I have heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? Yes, she is. I may even say I admire her probity and her kindness. She has helped me since I was reborn. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of this scowl plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. 
You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why do you suddenly need me? The Ascalon Club only recruits the best, and you definitely fit the bill. Your scientific and medical reputation alone would qualify you as a candidate. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club, and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What does it mean to be a member of the Ascalon Club? It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members, and I do appreciate obedience. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is his blood pure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall, speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. 
I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Sparer. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic, and your findings were quite alarming. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally, but I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? You are spying on me? Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed, until you put an end to his mission. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Banshaw was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No. He was a Volkod, all muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed, ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. You do know I killed him? Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. I have met peaceful and wise Skulls. To exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Skulls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. This new malevolent. everywhere in London. We are losing this fight.
Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece, figuratively? I feel perfectly fine. Do I have cause for concern? Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah. Vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member. And a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Mr. Dawson, of Dawson and Dawson, the wealthiest man in England. It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable unscalable war to isolate the deserving from the infected masses but i will put a foot outside until the pre went and their hunt by doing so you would create two separate ghettos what if the disease gets past the wall the results would be disastrous not if we eliminate all suspected cases of infection as soon as they appear a necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs. And it needs it now.
I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by right an ancient vampire. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Don't let any strangers come into your house. Remember, don't let any strangers... Good evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan, I can't believe my own eyes. Oh, you have come back too late, sir. Far too late. I know, Avery. I know about Mary and my mother. I'm so sorry. It was my duty to watch over her. She left the house in the middle of the night. The police said... It's all right, Avery. The police said... Her body was found near your sister's grave in Whitechapel. You're the master of the house now. I'd understand if you fired me, sir. I'm currently investigating sources of the epidemic in this part of town. Do you know anything useful? Not really, except all the McPherson's servants resigned a few days ago. They feared becoming infected, they said. The McPhersons? Where do they live? I think it's a rich house near the railway bridge in the southern part of the district. Thank you, Avery. We'll talk later. Your bedroom is ready as always. Good night, sir. It's locked. It's locked.
I remember Sunday walks in the park. Yes, sir. I fulfilled my promise to your father. This house is now yours, murderous son. Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand. Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? Well, I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Malanies... Yes? What about the Malanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? I wonder. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. That building is under quarantine. Could this be what I'm looking for?
can't believe I'm doing this. This is despicable. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> 